We have turned our faces away from your glory. It did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. People of God, rejoice in this good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our opening hymn is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever 
In Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like the shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, and in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. is blessed who fearing God walks not where sinners meet who does not stand with wicked ones who scorns the scorner's seat who does not stand with wicked ones who shuns the scorner's how blessed the one who in God's law finds goodness and delight and meditates upon that law with gladness day and night and meditates upon that law with gladness day and night. That one is nourished like a tree set by the river's side. Its leaf is green, its fruit is sure, the works of such abide. Its leaf is green, its fruit is sure, the works of such abide. The wicked like the driven chaff are swept from off the land. They shall not gather with the just, nor at the judgment stand. They shall not gather with the just, nor at the judgment stand. The Lord will guide the righteous well there with God is known. The 
of sinners far from God shall surely be overthrown. The way of sinners far from God shall surely be Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true, that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the sixth chapter. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with all the great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. And he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. It was remarked to me by several church members this past week that I have an old-fashioned soul These church members were not wrong. And actually, in our reading today, we have an old-fashioned word, which just makes me really happy. Blessed. You heard it in most of our readings, actually. Jeremiah talked about, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And Psalm 1 talks about, blessed is he who, fearing God, walks not in sinners, walks not in the sinner's way, And Jesus talks about blessed are the poor and blessed are the hungry and blessed are you who weep. Bless, bless, bless. It's an old-fashioned word. We actually don't hear it a lot anymore. And uh, it's fascinating how we don't hear it a lot. People will say they're fortunate instead of saying they're blessed. And even when somebody sneezes... Bless you has been replaced with, I promise it's not COVID. (laughs) 
bless. It's a strange word. In Greek, it me it, it's literally the word makarios, which means how fortunate is that one, or sometimes in the good old King James version, happy. So if you get nothing else from this sermon, please get this. Jesus blesses. Jesus blesses. And that is very good news indeed. We are not really sure about this word bless. We're not really sure that God blesses. We're not very confident in that. And so instead of God's blessing, what we seek are all sorts of other substitutes. Instead of blessing, we seek all sorts of other things to make us certain that we are loved and that we are valued. And so we center ourselves on success. Success will make us loved and make us valued. Or at least that's the lie we tell ourselves. It doesn't work very well, but we try so very hard. So if I just get one more better grade, then I will have love and value, or if I just get one more dollar in my bank account, or if I just get that one more promotion, or if I just get that one more award, then I will be loved and valued. Maybe if I just work a little harder at my job, abandon all other things for the sake of work, then I'll be loved and valued. Maybe if my sports team makes the Super Bowl, ahem, Bengals fans. No, actually, congratulations. Honestly, it's really good. But more seriously, maybe if my political team does well, maybe if the conservatives or the Democrats or the liberals or whoever, the Republicans, maybe if they do well and they win and they beat the other side, then I'll be loved and I'll be valued because their success will be my success. And when we can't find that love and that value in our success, then we start doing the other thing, which is tearing down that other person who has success. We're really good at this. If I can't find success, then nobody can have success. If I can't find love and value, then nobody can have love and value. And when that doesn't work, we will turn to other things. We will turn to substance to make us feel at least the simulation of love and value. We'll turn to all sorts of other things just so that we can know that we are loved and we are valued and we can feel like we are blessed. Yet Jesus blesses. Blessed. Jesus blesses. And, and here's the thing. We usually think the people who are blessed are the powerful or the mighty or the strong. So we'll talk about people in our world who are blessed, and we'll talk about Elon Musk, or we'll talk about athletes, or we'll talk about these people who have incredible talents. And all those people will talk about how they are blessed or I am blessed. Perhaps. That's what the word means. But I actually think it means something deeper than that, something deeper than I have a talent or something deeper than I've been made fortunate by circumstance. I'm reminded of a woman I met on internship. Her name was Doreen, and Doreen had this saying. She would always, you would ask her how... She was, how are you, Doreen? And she would always respond the exact same way every time, no matter the circumstance. I'm blessed by the best, she would say. She could say it really fast, so it all sounded like one B word. Blessed by the best. And by all respects, Doreen wasn't blessed. Chronically short on money, chronically struggling with her family, chronically struggling with her children and her extended family. Her car was always breaking down. She was always getting fired from a job. She didn't seem like she was blessed, and yet I swear to you, every time I asked how she was, I'm blessed by the best.
Jesus blesses. It's not just a blessing that says you're fortunate, or it's not just a blessing that says you've been made rich. It's not that kind of blessing. It's a blessing that says you are loved and you are valued and there is grace for you and God sees you and notices you and recognizes you and says, I am on your side. Jesus blesses. Blessed are you who are poor. I see you and you are valuable and I am on your side, says Jesus. Blessed are you who are hungry. I see you and I recognize you and I know your struggle and I am on your side. Blessed are you who weep. I know you and I see you and I am with you and I am on your side, says Jesus. In a certain way, it's the work God has always been doing from the very beginning. So way back in Genesis, we read about once how there was this couple named Sarah and Abraham who didn't have any kids, and it was a sign that they weren't, that God had totally forgotten them and forsaken them, and yet God blessed them. And everybody who's over 80 is thinking, I don't want to be blessed that way. It's the strange part about God's blessings. Sometimes we're not really sure whether we want them or not. And there, there, there were these people we read in Exodus, we read about them in Exodus, how they were slaves in Egypt for centuries, and yet God blessed them and led them to freedom. And we just read about in adult Sunday school how God, those same slaves, God will provide for them every day in the wilderness. God blesses, he sees them, he knows them, he values them, he loves them, and he's on their side and works for their betterment. And it's not just true in Scripture, but it's true to this day that the true that the poor and the hungry and the weeping, that God sees them and is on their side and loves them and values them. And for those of you in this room who are poor, God sees you and notices you and loves you and values you and is on your side. And for those who are hungry, God sees you and loves you and knows you and values you. And for those of you who are weeping, perhaps uncontrollably, God sees you and loves you and knows you and is on your side. So the only question for us is this. Can we make room for those whom Jesus blesses? That's where the church comes in. That's where this room and this building and this community that we call church, that's where it comes into the picture. Can we make room for those whom Jesus blesses? Jesus has told us quite clearly who he's blessing here. The poor and the hungry and the weeping and those who are reviled and hated. Jesus names those people as the people that he blesses. Can we make room for them? If we don't, that's what all those woes are about. If we don't, well, Jesus says the consequences there too. It is our job as church to come together and to make room for the people that Jesus blesses. They will be people, and they are people, people in this room, and people that the world will not necessarily say these are blessed. Can we make room for the people Jesus blesses? My only answer is, I hope so. Bless, it's an old-fashioned word, it makes my old-fashioned soul very happy. Jesus blesses, and that is very good news indeed. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in, bun in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those who tr who tr whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with the abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society be to become more honest and just. God of grace. Amen. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. God of grace. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in hope of eternal life with you especially Shelia Hall, God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on a journey Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, you this day. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent your prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry, 
and our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and more than enough for all. You may be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you now and forever. Amen. Thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to change the blessing here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.
Thanks be to God.